Lighthouse Home Groups, we're so glad that you've joined us as we continue our study on Mark Batterson's book called The Circle Maker. It's a powerful book about the importance of a persistent and audacious prayer life. And this week's chapter, chapter 15, is titled Life Goal Lists. Let's just start out here with a few questions just to kind of get our minds processing. Just think about these questions as I verbalize them. Why are goals important? What does a life look like with and without goals? What role does God play in the process of setting goals for your life? What role does God play in fulfilling those goals? And what role do you play in fulfilling those goals? And what are some biblical examples where God gave someone a goal or something to accomplish? I remember 20 and 21 year old Rachel and Jeremy sitting at a table in one of our pastor's offices as we went through premarital coaching. And one of the steps in that process was to set goals. Fast forward a few years, and as Rachel and I have the opportunity to lead other young couples in premarital coaching, we often refer back to the goals that we set. We're able to reflect on the goals we've met and also be reminded of the goals that we haven't met. We're also able to process through any adjustments or changes to that list. You see, goal setting is an important part of living an intentional life. As followers of Christ, I believe we're called to live meaningful lives that are intent on accomplishing God's purposes. We have a responsibility to listen to the Holy Spirit's leading, but I believe we also have a responsibility to be strategic and intentional as well. And a significant part of living a meaningful, intentional Christian life is accomplished through setting God-inspired, God-honoring goals. In this chapter, Mark provides us with 10 steps to goal setting. And so let's take a look. First off, begin in prayer. You can't skip this step. It's foundational to the rest of the process. God has a dream for you and his goals will help you accomplish his dream. If we want our goals to glorify God, we must consult him before we even begin making our list. Now, secondly, check your motives. Motive is the fuel that moves one towards accomplishment. It's the reason we do what we do. Take an honest look at why you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that honest look will either disqualify a goal or inspire you towards it. Is it for God's kingdom, for his purposes? Is it to benefit other people or is it just for yourself? The good news is if you start with prayer, you'll probably also have the right motive. Number three, Think in categories. This will help you organize your list and also keep a well-balanced approach to living that meaningful, intentional, God-honoring life. Some of the categories that Mark gives are family, influential, experiential, physical, and travel. And you might be asking yourself, why is there no spiritual category? And Mark explains it like this. He says, for him, each one of his goals has a great spiritual component. In fact, I noticed that one of his goals was to read the Bible through in seven different translations. And guess which category he listed that under? Experiential. Is it a spiritual thing? Absolutely. But it's also an experiential thing. Listen, don't get too caught up in, is this the right category, the wrong category, whatever. Just know that this can be a great help to you. Number four, be specific. Give dates, times, amounts, people you wanna have along with you for that journey. There's a difference in, I wanna go hike the Grand Canyon versus before I'm 50 years old, I wanna give my son, Elliot, a high five as we crest the south rim of the Grand Canyon after hiking the Bright Angel Trail so he and I can have an incredible shared experience and a better relationship because of it. The passion and motivation is oftentimes in the details of the goal that you create. Number five, write it down. Mark says, if you haven't written down your goals, you haven't really set them. Honestly, just in reading this chapter, I've personally been challenged to do this. Writing it down helps us remember it. It helps us to be accountable and it helps us to pray. Number six, include others. Remember my example of giving Elliot that high five at the Grand Canyon. There's a reason for that. Elliot loves nature. He loves bugs. He loves creatures, stars, planets. He loves all that stuff. So doing something like hiking the Grand Canyon is something where he'll be able to experience all of that stuff with me. Um, my goal isn't just to hike. My goal is to create a memory, an impression that he and I get to share. 
Mark says, nothing cements a relationship like shared goals. Goals are the relational glue. Now let me encourage you to make intentional goals to invest in valuable relationships. Make intentional goals to invest in valuable relationships. In fact, the greatest goal you can ever participate in is the goal that Jesus gave us. If you wanna grow closer to Jesus, participate in his goal for us that we call the Great Commission. You'll find yourself growing closer to Jesus through that. Number seven, celebrate along the way. Take the time to celebrate the accomplishments. Take the time to acknowledge when God accomplishes something through you and in you. And take the time to throw a party when he answers a prayer that maybe you've been praying for for a really, really long time. Number eight, dream big. Dream big. You'll have small goals and big goals. You'll have short-term and long-term goals, but you've got to have at least a few that are God-sized goals, things you can only accomplish with his help. When a God-sized goal is met, you'll have a greater understanding of how big our God really is. Number nine, think long. Here's what Mark says. Most of us overestimate what we can accomplish in two years, but we underestimate what we can accomplish in 10 years. If you wanna dream until the day you die, you need to set goals that take a lifetime to achieve. Now I encourage you, make your list future-proof. Don't let it be so nearsighted that it becomes obsolete in just a few short years. Simply put, think generationally. And then lastly, number 10, pray hard. Make your list a prayer list. Pray that the goals that God gives you become significant milestones. Pray that God accomplishes his purposes through his goals for your life. Pray for God moments in the midst of your traveling. Pray for restored relationships. Pray for mighty moves of God on your journeys. You see, when we begin and end in prayer, it reminds us of who the goals came from, why he gave them to us, and how he helped us achieve them. I pray this lesson tonight was an encouragement to dream big and to seek God for what his purposes and plans are for your life. I pray it was an encouragement to live God-centered, meaningful, and intentional lives that fulfill his dream for you. Now, let's close by discussing a few of those questions that I opened up with at the beginning of the video. You'll see them here on the screen. You'll see them printed on the leader sheet as well. So thanks again for joining us. Be blessed, Lighthouse family.